colleagues and uh, delegations, uh, good afternoon and welcome back to this meeting. As I announced at the beginning of the meeting in the morning and also by fax last week, this is the last meeting of the General Council where our current Director General, Mr. Paski Leme, is present with us in that capacity. He will now address the Council, after which I will open the floor to delegations. Before I request uh, Pascal Leme to take the floor, allow me to say a few words. Pascal, when I say that uh, we will miss you very much, I believe I speak not only as the General Council Chairman and the Ambassador of Pakistan, but also as a representative of the WTO community as a whole. A statement from your country said, to command is to serve, nothing more and nothing less. And I believe, Pascal, that you have been an extraordinary commander. Because for the past eight years, you have served this organization tirelessly with vision, passion, competence, and wisdom. Your legacy uh, is so vast that it is simply impossible for me to summarize it in a few words. Your exceptional contribution to the multilateral trading system, and I must say, even before you joined as uh, Director General, your vigorous fight against protectionism, your firm belief in economic growth and poverty reduction through trade have been and will continue to be an inspiration to the international community as a whole. During uh, your term as uh, Director General, you have focused on some of the fundamental functions of the WTO and improved them. We now have a much stronger monitoring and trade policy review arm. The increase in activity in dispute settlement has been well managed. Aid for trade has moved into center stage. And during your term, 11 new members have joined this organization, bringing it ever closer to universality. Besides, you have put all the functionaries of this organization under one roof. Anyone can hold the helm when the sea is calm. But you, Pascal, have held the helm often in rough, sometimes even tempestuous waters. The world has changed enormously in the past eight years. And over this time, many have called for the Doha negotiations to advance to their conclusion. We have faithfully responded to these calls, and you have led us, the members, to the very brink of success in 2008 and even in 2011. It is to our detriment, not yours, that this success slipped away again. We are now heading towards another occasion when we can take the negotiations forward. If we are able to do so, it will be due to, in large part, to your leadership over the past eight years. Whatever the outcome for Bali, we are all in your debt. Pascal, uh, I know I speak for all membership when I say a simple but heartfelt uh, thank you. We are confident that the WTO family can continue to count on your support, and we wish you every success and happiness in the future. So, Pascal, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I came uh, before the General Council in uh, 2005, uh, when I was a candidate, uh, and again in 2009, when I was a candidate, uh, to uh, 
share with you my views about this uh, organization. <clears throat> Today, uh, I come to you one last time in my uh, capacity as DG, and I do this as a sign of uh, my strong commitment to being uh, accountable uh, to you, the members of this organization, uh, whom I have uh, strived uh, to serve uh, for the two terms uh, you've appointed me to serve. So thank you for affording me uh, this uh, opportunity. Let me uh, begin by saying that it has been an immense uh, honor and privilege to serve this uh, organization. I think it's uh, fair to say together uh, that we've uh, strengthened the WTO as uh, the global uh, trade body as a major pillar of uh, global economic governance. Despite the heavy headwinds and the turmoil in the global economy, as well as on the geopolitical scene, together uh, we've made this organization uh, larger and uh, stronger. And this, I believe, is our main achievement uh, during these last eight years. We've lived through transformational years. We've seen the rise of China to the number one world exporter, uh, significant uh, progress in meeting the Millennium Development Goals, and developing countries uh, accounting for more than half of the world's economic activity and more than half of uh, global exports. But we've also seen uh, challenges as uh, two food crises, the biggest financial and economic crisis in the 1930s, pandemics, uh, natural catastrophes, which have uh, severely impacted the functioning of global trade. And the WTO has uh, remained solid in the midst of this uh, tempest. When I first appeared uh, before you in 05, uh, I said I believed uh, trade opening and the reduction of trade barriers were essential uh, to promoting growth, fostering sustainable development, reducing poverty, uh, creating jobs. Ultimately, that would work towards uh, more peace and more stability. But I also stressed at the time uh, that this process was uh, neither natural nor automatic. Getting more value for your trade, not just more trade, means that uh, trade opening also needs to be embedded in a set of uh, domestic and international policies. My belief in what I called uh, the Geneva Consensus in uh, 05 uh, is even uh, firmer today. The WTO is the system which provides for multilateral trade opening, global trade rulemaking, and uh, enforcement of these rules. Opening markets and designing global rules remain our core business, and our core business remains unfinished. At the same time, uh, openness, non-discrimination, and uh, transparency remain our core political uh, values. And it is through these uh, lenses that I would like to uh, shortly outline the experience of these last eight years. Starting with uh, multilateral trade opening and how we have to adjust to a changing world. Now, of course, negotiating trade opening is not the only function of the WTO, but it is clearly one of its central functions. And the uh, embodiment of these functions remains the Doha <coughs> Development Round. Because the Doha Round has not yet been delivered, uh, some uh, would be tempted to say that uh, this organization is in crisis, that trade multilateralism does not function, that the WTO has become irrelevant. I believe these are two simple shortcuts at a much more complex reality. To begin with, I must say I do not think the debate is about the relevance of the WTO. 
it is about its credibility. And credibility stems from uh, the capacity to deliver. And delivering multilateral trade opening today is not trivial. Opening trade and crafting multilateral rules have been impacted by the profound shifts in uh, geopolitics and in economics. The former two-speed model of a world divided between uh, developed and developing countries uh, no longer reflects uh, today's economic realities. On this, a serious conceptual adjustment is needed. We must find a new balance between reciprocity and flexibility in a multi-dimensional membership if we are to keep uh, delivering on multilateral trade opening. This is compounded by short-term politics that are becoming increasingly incompatible with the setting of the medium and long-term goals which are essential for designing uh, consistent trade policies. Trade opening has been further dented by the biggest economic uh, crisis, uh, as I said, in the 1930s, which has left uh, millions unemployed in advanced economies and which is now hindering on the sustainability of uh, growth in emerging economies. Now, I also believe that it's too easy to say that uh, trade multilateralism does not function. We saw trade multilateralism work in Hong Kong in 05. We saw it work in the adoption of a transparency mechanism for regional trade agreements. We saw it work in the renegotiations of the GPA. We saw it work in the simplification of the rules governing the accession of LDCs to WTO. And I'm now convinced that we will see it work in Bali uh, with the successful conclusion of a deal on uh, trade facilitation together with uh, some development LDC and agricultural issues and even possibly with the uh, ITA too. We've also seen it work in the negotiations which have brought 11 new members into the WTO family. Large economies uh, such as uh, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, Ukraine. Smaller economies uh, such as uh, Tajikistan, Montenegro, five LDCs. Samoa, Vanuatu, Tonga, Laos, Cape Verde, LDC at the time. And with Yemen uh, looking good for September. Today, to, together, they uh, represent the equivalent of an economy of the size of Germany. On this <coughs> theme of accessions, uh, a message of a caution for the future. Uh, please make sure you do not create a divide uh, between uh, rams and roms, uh, between recently exceeded members and uh, the rest of members. Uh, with RAMs uh, having, on average, a substantially higher level of commitment than the rest. We must, you must, uh, strive for a more convergent uh, trading system. I often hear that uh, the way forward is to abandon the WTO, leave it aside, and simply move to plurilateral or regional agreements. But we have all seen the fate of a number of these uh, prelateral deals, uh, such as uh, the ACTA or the Global System of Trade Preferences among developing countries. We also <clears throat> know that uh, behind the headlines of launching mega regional, as uh, some uh, refer to, uh, lie uh, tremendous difficulties and sometimes uh, even uh, no final deal uh, at all, as was the case uh, for the free trade area of the Americas. I do not wish on this to be uh, misunderstood. I'm not against trade opening outside the WTO. I believe that uh, plurilaterals, mega regionals, regional, bilateral, unilateral arrangements can, can, contribute uh, to trade opening and hence to the leveling of the global trade uh, playing field, which must ultimately remain 
our collective goal, because this is what fairness is about. But I do think uh, we would do well to recognize uh, that the issue is not a trade opening in the WTO, as opposed to a trade opening outside the WTO. The issue today is with the difficulties involved in trade opening to court. Domestic uh, trade politics have become more difficult. Trade deals have become more complex because the nature of obstacle to trade has evolved. Uh, we are not longer negotiating just the reduction of tariffs, uh, but also of non-tariff barriers, uh, which have gained uh, enormous importance. Domestic uh, trade policies uh, require a permanent engagement with civil society and with the public at large. They also require properly placing trade in its right context as one instrument in the toolbox uh, to generate uh, growth, to create uh, jobs. Uh, trade policy is one instrument, an important one, but not the instrument, and it is an instrument for and not a weapon against the well-being of all. And the fact that non-tariff barriers are becoming uh, the main obstacle to trade, uh, I think, requires us to review the way we deal with them. How do we ensure that we limit the negative incidence on trade of measures often taken to protect consumers? This is a matter of interest for all members and whose uh, dimension this organization has, in my view, not yet seriously recognized. If non-tariff measures are today's and tomorrow's main obstacle to trade, we need to make sure that the manner in which these measures are addressed contributes to leveling, not scattering the playing field. Of course, the WTO is not a regulatory agency for the vast majority of non-tariff measures. But I believe it is well placed to become a platform where the convergence of these measures could be monitored along the line, for instance, of what we've done with Aid for Trade. Finally, uh, I do believe uh, critics have a point when they suggest that the manner in which we conduct multilateral negotiations could be improved. Much time could, in my view, be saved in the negotiating process if, uh, after an initial phase of definition of objectives to be reached and principles to be observed, leading to a mandate, the Secretariat was tasked to mobilize its expertise uh, to table proposals around which negotiations would take place. It being, of course, understood that it would be for the members uh, to take the final decision, uh, mirroring, by the way, the processes uh, followed in many other international organizations. So all these are valuable lessons from the DDA, which uh, remains, uh, as we know, an unfulfilled promise, a promise which will need to be fulfilled in order to uh, redress the imbalance in some of our rules, uh, which is a legacy of history, uh, starting, of course, with agriculture. I believe there is no escape from achieving positive results in the round, just like there is uh, no escape from adjusting the Doha menu to today's realities. And this will require, in my view, uh, the introduction of a new elements into the menu, new elements which require multilateral handling, so as, again, to better level the playing field. Now, moving to the administration of agreements, to monitoring if uh, opening trade and crafting new trade rules is essential to the credibility of this organization, uh, administering existing one is also what gives it its uh, raison d'etre. 
as the saying goes, uh, sunshine is the best uh, disinfectant. Now, perhaps because members have, uh, since 99, uh, mainly focused on the negotiating pillar of the WTO, perhaps because we all took the administering of existing rules for granted, uh, the reality uh, was that uh, the surveillance function of the WTO uh, had been uh, underperforming uh, for some years. The mandates for notification and peer review are clearly there, but their implementation uh, was uh, somewhat uh, spotty, to put it uh, mildly. Now, my sense is that the situation on this front has uh, improved, even if more remains to be done. Progress has been achieved in transparency in regional trade agreements, with close to uh, 100 agreements considered since uh, 06. A new monitoring of trade policy measures has been uh, developed in response to the 08 uh, crisis. There has been an improvement in the rate of notifications in committees, thanks in part to the technical assistance, which has focused on helping developing uh, countries meet uh, notification requirements, and also uh, thanks uh, to what I believe is a better use of better trade policy reviews. Committees, uh, at least uh, most of them, have also uh, worked to improve peer reviews. And tremendous progress uh, has been made in uh, bringing all trade policy information under one roof uh, through the creation of the ITIP, the Integrated uh, Trade Intelligence Portal, just yesterday afternoon. We unveiled the new module, the one that uh, covers uh, services. ITIP uh, will provide members with a one-stop shop with easily downloadable access to non-tariff measures across the spectrum of WTO agreement, to tariff, and to trade data. We've also started working with uh, other partners, such as uh, ANCAD, the World Bank, to ensure a more coherent use of our resources in this field. Uh, in sum, uh, we now have uh, greater transparency and simpler access to trade intelligence. But of course, we still can and must do better. The rate of notifications overall uh, remains too low. Peer reviews uh, could be made more effective. And ITIP uh, will continue to uh, require a serious uh, investment to become the depository of all WTO uh, trade policy information. Let me now turn to the uh, dispute settlement, the other main function of uh, enforcement in the WTO. 58 panels have been composed uh, since uh, September 05, uh, 43 of which by the DG. The dispute settlement uh, system is solid. It works well. The DSU review process has continued to run its course, but in the meantime, uh, under the uh, leadership of uh, DDG Hara, uh, improvements have been introduced to reduce the costs in administering the system. We're also very advanced in uh, developing a digital registry uh, which will allow the uh, e-filing of cases. Looking forward, the main challenge in dispute settlement will be to address peaks of activity, in particular at the appeal level. Another uh, challenge is the participation of uh, developing countries in dispute settlement, uh, the provision of technical assistance and training, and the support of the uh, advisory center on WTO law are crucial, uh, hence my own uh, personal uh, engagement. Uh, to ensure uh, adequate uh, funding of this uh, center. Finally, I believe in this area there would be merit in an improved and more frequent use of good offices, mediation, arbitration, 
uh, each of which are provided uh, for in our existing rules. Uh, the banana case uh, is the uh, only one uh, in which uh, these have been used uh, since 05. Let me now turn to coherence uh, using the terminology of a famous appellate body report, the WTO does not work in clinical isolation. It is part of wider uh, system of global governance, hence the importance of ensuring coherence in global uh, economic policy making. We've strengthened our cooperation with the IMF and the World Bank under the explicit coherent mandate contained in the Marrakesh Agreement, but we've also significantly expanded it to many other organizations, in particular the uh, UN family. And let me here uh, pay uh, tribute to the Secretary of the UN and thank him uh, and his predecessor for the support uh, they have always afforded uh, to the WTO, uh, and I can witness that, and of course to me personally. But we've also uh, extended this cooperation to regional development banks and to uh, several regional economic uh, organizations. Aid for Trade, the EIF, the Consultative Mechanism on Cotton are clear examples of a coherence at work. Not that we've turned the WTO into a development agency, not that we have uh, greatly expanded the Secretariat resources to work in these areas, not that we've indulged in some sort of a mission creep, uh, but uh, we've used our convening power, our legitimacy, our notoriety, our leadership on trade matters to ensure that uh, building uh, trade capacity goes hand in hand uh, with trade opening and that the benefits of trade opening do not remain a distant uh, hope uh, for so many of our uh, poorer members. The numerous examples of results on the ground that were showcased at the uh, recent uh, Global Aid for Trade Review are, I think, a clear testament to our collective wisdom in uh, launching this initiative. Uh, I already said this morning a lot of credit for this uh, goes to uh, Valentin Rugabiza, so I don't have to repeat it unless I really won't have problem with her. <laughs> now, but there's been many more examples of uh, cooperation and uh, enhanced coherence on trade finance, on uh, agriculture and food security under the UN Task Force on Food Security chaired by the UNSG, and I here want to pay tribute to the uh, contribution of uh, Harsha uh, on this matter. Uh, we've worked on climate change with UNEP, on measuring uh, trade in value added with the OECD and many others on access to medicines, and medical innovation with uh, WIPO and WHO on sanitary and phytosanitary standards uh, under the SDTF, on non-tariff measures with uh, UNCTAD, with the ITC, on jobs uh, with the ILO. The WTO is also at the G20 table and has prepared uh, regular reports on trade and investment protectionism and on aid for trade, and we've cooperated uh, with the UN system uh, in the preparation of the post-015 uh, uh, development agenda. Finally, uh, for the record, I've participated in all, all 16 meetings of the UN uh, Chiefs Executive Board uh, during this period. But as we know, as important as coherence uh, between member-driven organizations is, what really counts is the coherence of members. And I hope uh, more to come in uh, domestic coherence and in uh, other areas uh, such as, uh, for instance, uh, the relationship 
uh, between the WTO and the uh, ILO, which, as you all know, uh, remains uh, strangely asymmetric. That, of course, uh, remains uh, your own task. There was a time uh, when uh, trade negotiations could be conducted, uh, agreements could be reached, and even implemented largely away from the public uh, eye. As the French uh, saying goes, pour vivre heureux, uh, vivons caché. But our societies uh, no longer allow this. Not least because trade uh, politics remain extremely sensitive. The many that benefit are silent. Those who suffer are understandably vocal. Their voices need to be heard because they are usually uh, the weaker, the less well-trained, the less skilled workers, uh, often women, uh, public scrutiny is inevitable. And there's, for this reason, a growing need to engage with our stakeholders and with the public at large. And this is, uh, by the way, why uh, ministers and uh, capital's involvement uh, remains decisive. But to be frank, and I have to be frank this afternoon, uh, experience shows that uh, engaging both ministers and ambassadors is a, let's say, delicate chemistry. Too much time uh, spent with ministers and the ambassadors get restless. Too much time spent with ambassadors and the ministers uh, become uh, distant and mobilizing their support at the right moment uh, becomes harder. So uh, on this, uh, Roberto, uh, you will have to find the right uh, recipe. Uh, I must say that mine uh, probably didn't always work. <laughs> Much has been uh, achieved to enhance interactions with uh, stakeholders, with the public. We've expanded our engagement with uh, uh, small and non-resident members. Uh, this has uh, been tremendously helped by the setting up of an e-learning platform, which has grown from around uh, 200 participants in 05 uh, to almost uh, 5,000 in 030. By the end of uh, 012, uh, we would have provided access to e-learning to uh, 20,000 participants. This is one of the major achievements of the WTO's technical assistance in these eight years smarter, more targeted, more cost-efficient support. We've also expanded outreach with the external stakeholders. We've significantly stepped up our dialogue with NGOs, with business, with civil society at large, both during my visits to WTO members, as well as here in Geneva, in particular through the public forum, uh, which has attracted an increasing number of participants uh, every year. We've further developed our contact with parliamentarians, for whom we have uh, devised a regular newsletter, and now uh, local and regional seminars uh, to brief them uh, on trade-related matters. And we have enhanced our relations with academics, and in particular uh, those in uh, developing countries, through the uh, creation of uh, WTO chairs, the WTO Young Economist Award, and the revamping of WTO reference uh, centers. Finally, we've uh, tried to keep close to the public at large through the revamping of the WTO website, which is very highly rated, the engagement with the media across the world, uh, through enhanced technical assistance and outreach efforts and initiatives such as the Open Day, which have helped uh, bring the organization uh, closer uh, to our immediate uh, environment in uh, Geneva. So overall, 
I believe uh, all these uh, initiatives have helped reposition the WTO within global economic governance and uh, also improved uh, the visibility and, and the image of the organization. Now, this task, of course, uh, is far from uh, being completed. The WTO, with its uh, single Geneva site uh, and its uh, very uh, limited resources, cannot substitute uh, for an active outreach uh, on trade issues by its members. And I believe that longer term, outreach will be even more important than today uh, to sustain the legitimacy uh, of an institution whose uh, core mission, reducing obstacle to trade, will have to deal with more value-based, hence politically more sensitive non-tariff measures. Coming to the uh, Secretariat, uh, three uh, adjectives come to my mind when uh, I think of the WTO Secretariat. Uh, small, lean, and uh, hyper-competent. With its uh, 650 staff, the Secretariat is very small compared to many of our sisters' organizations whose headcounts are in the Southerns but it is home to uh, an incredible reservoir of uh, expertise uh, devoted to serving members. As already mentioned this morning, my objective has been to modernize the Secretariat, to introduce uh, changes to adjust to evolving circumstances, uh, but also to enhance efficiency and improve uh, value for money. At the end of the day, uh, we all have to remember that uh, we remain uh, an organization uh, funded by taxpayers' money. And let me, uh, en passant, uh, thanks uh, those of you in this room uh, who have uh, helped with your capitals in uh, settling your ears. Certainly not an easy task and not concluded yet, uh, but uh, I think a major uh, step forward. Now, I won't detail the changes in resources management which have been introduced, which have been the object of a separate report to you, as uh, already mentioned today. Instead, uh, I just want to focus on the importance of ensuring that the Secretariat provides intellectual leadership in the field of trade. This means uh, fostering research, encouraging thinking, publication. I believe much has been achieved in this field, and the credit uh, for this goes to the staff. Uh, research on uh, trade in added value, work on value chains, on analyzing uh, regional trade agreements, on preparing trade policy reviews, uh, world trade reports, assisting uh, panels and uh, appellate bodies, and the list uh, goes on. Uh, I think the WTO has now become the reference on trade knowledge. But we cannot rest on our laurels. The Secretariat needs to continue to be forward-looking, to be fully aware of new issues and look into future obstacles and uh, patterns of trade. And this will uh, require uh, networking uh, with members and uh, other stakeholders. Uh, in the staff of the Secretariat, you have a formidable asset. Keep investing in it. And uh, think about how you could better exploit its potential, as uh, suggested by uh, the stakeholders report I convened last year to look into the future of world trade. Uh, what I can uh, <clears throat> guarantee to you after eight years is that uh, neutrality and independence are deeply rooted in the Secretariat values 
and therefore that uh, it deserves more of your trust. Now, I'm coming to the end of my statement, and I think it's time to start looking into the future. Uh, these eight years have seen the building of a stronger institution. I'm not just referring to the uh, renovated premises. Uh, this is now an institution, which is more than an organization. Beyond the benefits that it provides to its member, the WTO, as an institution, as an asset in itself, a global public good that uh, each and every one of its members must, must nurture. Of course, the DG represents the system and uh, should always be the first one to care about the system. But it cannot be that the DG uh, lives in uh, Venus, the planet of a global public good, and uh, members uh, live in Mars, uh, the planet where members fight for their individual interests. You must look beyond your interests and also care about the institution itself, both as owners but also as uh, stakeholders uh, that you are. As I already said, in these eight years, I've also seen the political economy of trade opening better integrated into a set of uh, domestic and international policies. This is uh, an important step forward uh, in the challenge of convergence that the report of the future of trade uh, which I already mentioned, has so well reflected. Support <coughs> for more open trade uh, will not be sustained uh, without ensuring uh, greater fairness uh, between winners and losers of trade opening. And without more convergence on value-based preferences that lie between differences in non-tariff measures, I think these remain the main challenges ahead. So, Mr. Chairman, on the 31st of August, I'll be stepping down, passing the baton to Roberto. Uh, I'll take with me uh, great memories, many friends, some better lessons, uh, but above all, uh, sense of uh, fulfillment in what has uh, so far been a career at the service of the public interest. Uh, this would not have been possible without the support that uh, you all have uh, extended to me uh, during my two terms, without your collaboration, and even sometimes uh, without some uh, barking uh, here and there. This would not have been possible without the uh, a team of uh, DDGs uh, with whom I've worked during these eight years. They are behind many of this uh, review of achievements. They've been my arms, my eyes, my ears, uh, to provide you with all our best uh, service. Uh, so uh, Alejandro, uh, Harsha, Rufus, Valentin, uh, alphabetical order. Many thanks uh, for your support and uh, friendship. Uh, neither uh, would have these uh, been possible without my office, a small uh, but a beautiful team of uh, devoted staff who have endured my uh, <clears throat> frantic and demanding uh, working and traveling with them, uh, while never or almost never losing their calm and smile. Uh, to all of them go more than my sincere appreciation, my heartfelt gratitude, and there I have to depart from my written speech because Arantxa, of course, had to review it. Uh, so, uh, special mention to you, Arantxa. Not in my speech, okay. in my heart. Finally, uh, word of thanks to the <coughs> Secretariat staff, uh, to all of them, uh, without exceptions, uh, to the professionals, to the support, to the directors, to the rank and file, to the security, 
Uh, to all those who made this uh, adventure uh, possible, uh, they've helped me uh, learn more each and every day of these eight years, uh, which I think is a rare, very rare privilege. So my journey here is coming to an end. It's time for a bit of a public emotion, which, as you know, is not exactly my style. Uh, <laughs> Let me uh, just say that it's time for me to embark uh, towards another life cycle. Thank you for your attention.